afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's lovely to be here to talk to you about this degree program. So you've heard uh, from the Dean that about the Faculty of Arts in general, and I'm sure you know the Faculty of Arts overall, with its um, four big schools, will offer a range of different major programs that students can take. The degree program I'm going to talk about is a new offering. It is also a BA degree, but it's called the BA in Humanities and Digital Technologies. So it offers a more specialized introduction and a more specialized um, um, training regime for its students. This program, which is a world first, not only in Hong Kong and the region, but absolutely around the world, combines humanities, the traditional study areas of the arts degree. So that means subjects like English or Chinese language or literature, philosophy, comparative literature, art history, philosophy, all the subjects you can take a major in across the faculty. It combines those traditional areas with an interest in digital technologies. And that means things like computer programming, working with databases, understanding machine learning and AI, understanding how computers work for us as researchers and more generally in the world. So we want to equip our students not only with those humanities skills that are so central and important and that employers really demand, and those skills are problem solving, analytical thinking, evaluation skills, and communication. We want to take those skills and join them together with that enormously in-demand skill set for digital technologies, for programming, for computing, uh, and, and those related skills. So we're aiming to create a skill set to help our students excel in a fast-changing future. And to do that, we bring together communication, creativity, analysis, and problem solving. We focus in this program on practical skills and jobs-focused training. So while we do keep all of that marvelous breadth of the Faculty of Arts, allowing students to choose their own path and their own specializations and interests, we also focus on really hands-on training, what you might call the hard skills of technology. And we focus on industry-relevant training. So we really aim to push our students to take on internships and to undertake concrete projects right from the moment that they start in first year. The aim here is to open doors across lots of industries and provide students with the tools to build each their own strong career path and let them make an impact across lots of different sectors. So we take our students from introductory to advanced digital skills. We understand that not everybody who comes to an arts degree has necessarily got any computing experience in the past. Maybe that science and technology wasn't what they were super interested in when they were in high school. Maybe they didn't get the chance to learn much programming or any programming. That's absolutely fine. We meet our students where they are, we find what their passions are in the humanities, and we help them add to those passions with advanced, ultimately, a very advanced digital skills. Students will create their own final year project, bringing together whatever their interests are in the Faculty of Arts in the traditional areas with their newly acquired digital skills. And the program offers every student a guaranteed internship opportunity. The internship is actually one of the courses that is compulsory within this degree program, which we hope will boost their career prospects post-graduation. Like an arts degree, we aim to offer learning that is both flexible and personalized. Now, what does that mean? Flexibility, you've heard a little bit about from the Dean, which is that in this Faculty of Arts, we don't limit students to a single major when they first arrive. We ask them to come, spend a year, take a range of courses, see what they are passionate about and what they fall in love with, and then follow that through. This is exactly the same in the BAHDT program. And what that means is that we let our students both choose their specialization in arts and choose their specialization in the digital world. So maybe this will be a student who is deeply interested in archaeology and virtual reality, and those are the two things they're going to bring together. Or perhaps this is a student who's really interested in literature and databases, and those are the two skills they're going to bring together. So across the majors and minors of the Faculty of Arts, students will choose a specialization and then combine those with their, uh, with their digital skills. And in that sense, we'll work to personalize the degree, the course of the degree program for each student. What do we aim to create? 
We want to create future leaders across a range of fields or industries. So what this means to us is that we're not looking to produce computer programmers who, who know how to do only the back end work, but don't have bigger picture thinking. We aim to create people who can discuss problem solving and analysis and issues right across the range of their own expertise in the humanities, whatever career path they want to work on, and also digital skills. We want creative thinkers who will shape the future of their fields. In a way, I think uh, the digital world is too important to be left just to the computer scientists. And I think it's the creative thinking, the evaluative thinking, the imagination that we bring in the humanities that's absolutely vital to the future direction of technology here and around the world. And we invite our students to be innovators and to be real problem solvers. And this comes through all elements of the degree program. Already the first and second year students in this program have opportunities, have had opportunities off campus and on campus to participate in research projects. Some of our students have attended archeological dig in Armenia over the summer. Students have come with me to take tours of uh, high school students around the Hong Kong Heritage Museum for the virtually Versailles exhibition. And students are working with various of the faculty members already as researchers assistants and independent researchers on their own research projects and this already from first year and I think that's absolutely going to be typical of the way that this degree develops its innovators and its problem solvers. So what does the actual curriculum look like? The major that we have built into the program is called the major in humanities and digital technologies. So that this major is built of a humanities focus an interdisciplinary digital technologies focus, and then it culminates in the final year internship and capstone project. In addition to this, students can pursue a second major or up to two additional minors from within the Faculty of Arts or non-arts programs. The humanities focus includes humanities introductory electives and advanced elements, and they're chosen from one of the 16, I beg your pardon, I think a previous slide said 15, arts majors. So for example, students wouldn't take a, a separate major necessarily in say English studies unless they particularly wanted to, but that would become their humanities focus. So everything that there is a major in, in the faculty can become a student's focus within their major in the Bachelor of Arts in Humanities and Digital Technologies degree. And just like any other major students take introductory and then advanced electives to become an expert in that subject area. On the digital technology side, students take introductory and advanced topics in humanities and digital technologies. They also go outside the Faculty of Arts to take data science, and to take computer programming right alongside uh, the computer science students. We take our computer programming introductory courses in second year to give our students a little bit of time to get used to the digital world and how to work with digital tools. And then there are some advanced interdisciplinary electives. And in addition in the program, there's an internship, a capstone project, and an overseas exchange opportunity, just as there is for across the programs of the Faculty of Arts. I mentioned that we have a guaranteed internship in years three or four. That might mean students might work on a project within the institution or with one of the various departments inside HKU, or they might go out into commercial uh, companies and nonprofits and do their work there. The capstone project, which is undertaken in the fourth year of this four-year degree, is supported by our uh, Developing Arts Technology Lab that is currently under construction and lets students undertake their own choice of interdisciplinary re research in any area of the student's own interest. So this is a, it's a subject by itself, but students will design it themselves. They'll decide what they're passionate about, what their project is, and what it is they want to research. And students are also Welcome to undertake an overseas exchange for one semester or perhaps even as much as one year of their program and there are partner institutions for the Faculty of Arts all around the world. What are our graduation pathways that we think students might do when they finish their degree? Well, there are a huge number of industries. The Faculty of Arts is already a, a feeder degree to a, a hugely broad range of career possibilities. It's difficult to even list them all. 
for us in particular with what that humanities and digital technologies adds that employers are very, very keen on, we think that this is particularly going to be relevant if students are interested in going into technology industry, into banking and finance, into government and public service, into advisory or consulting roles, into education and training, or many more. And in terms of actual career job titles that our students might find that they are particularly qualified for, consultancy and research, user experience design, content strategists, these are the increasingly needed people who talk about how things, who think about the strategy for how things are presented online for their various companies, data analysts, PR specialists, people who work in education technology, digital media producers, and many more. But those are really just the digitally focused skills. And I think it's very important to remember that at its heart, this is a Bachelor of Arts degree program. And so it qualifies students just as a Bachelor of Arts would right across the different uh, career paths and specializations of the arts. If students are interested in further study after their degree, because they will have done a specialization within their major, they might like to pursue further study in, the, in a faculty of arts, either in Hong Kong or overseas, in that particular area. They might take that in the digital humanities, which will be a specialization of theirs, or in any field that they happen to be interested in. And one thing that we can say absolutely for certain is that in in the academic world for students who are interested in staying within academia and going on and getting maybe a PhD and maybe working in a university, there is across the humanities only one field in which the number of jobs is more than the number of qualified candidates regularly and every year, and that is in digital humanities. There is a really felt need for people who are trained in both the humanities and in the digital skills increasingly needed to do that humanities work. So that's about it from me. I'm going to be here in case anyone has questions afterwards that they can chat to me. And I um, recommend having a look at both the admissions information on the general website and having a look for specific um, questions at our BAHDT website, which are available through the university websites. And you can see here the email addresses for any inquiries. Thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Welcome to uh, the Arts uh, Faculty uh, I Day. Uh, following Dr. Adair's uh, introduction of the BAHDT program, I would like to provide some uh, information about the curricula and the learning opportunities for arts students. You may have read about different arts programs from our website and uh, brochures. Uh, we have uh, three single degree programs. Uh, they are uh, BA, uh, BAHDT, and uh, BASC. Uh, you can see that uh, the third one is uh, uh, actually uh, offered in uh, collaboration with uh, Faculty of Science and the Faculty of Social Science. And we also have uh, the double degree programs. Uh, they are five-year study uh, programs, uh, BA, uh, BA in Chinese, uh, BA, BA in English, and also BA uh, and uh, LLB. Uh, these uh, programs are um, administered by uh, faculties of uh, education and uh, uh, law, uh, respectively. And, uh, and also, uh, additionally, we have this uh, two plus two uh, dual degree uh, programs in collaboration with uh, uh, Sciences Po and uh, also uh, UC Berkeley. Uh, these are all, uh, both of them are uh, world class universities. So there's uh, uh, not enough time for me to, uh, to go through all these programs. So here I would uh, focus on uh, the BA program and uh, give you some highlights on uh, what you expect to learn in the four-year BA studies. So the BA curriculum uh, normally takes uh, four years uh, to complete. So in year one, you don't need to declare a major, but uh, you can just uh, you know, take courses and explore your interests. And in year two, you should uh, declare 
uh, at least one arts major, and uh, you can keep uh, taking the uh, major courses uh, to fulfill the credit requirements in the later years. Okay, and uh, in year three, uh, you may engage in exchange uh, studies in overseas uh, institutions and explore internships or other experiential uh, learning uh, opportunities. And in the final year, uh, you should uh, complete one uh, capstone project, either uh, an uh, independent study or uh, an uh, internship course. Okay. So, um, uh, and also, like all uh, HKU undergraduates, uh, you need to fulfill the university compulsory courses uh, during the first uh, three years. Here is a full list of uh, BA major and minor programs. You can see uh, a big difference, uh, uh, you know, by number of programs that uh, each school offers. So, for example, school English offers uh, just one major and one minor, right? But uh, uh, School of Modern Languages and Cultures offers uh, many majors and minors. So with this um, uh, global and area studies uh, as the newest one, uh, which um, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. John Wong, will <laughs> introduce uh, in a moment. Okay, so um, some of you may feel overwhelmed by this, these many uh, majors and minors, uh, so many choices, you may have in your mind, you know, this, uh, these questions like, uh, you know, which major or majors uh, should I choose? And uh, am I eligible for one uh, a certain major? Or can I uh, change to another major in my senior years? And so on. So actually, you don't need to worry too much about the major minor choices. So here, I would stress uh, a few general points uh, for your reference. So the first is you should see this as uh, uh, a um, flexible rather than a fixed pathway that best suits your interests, academic strength, and uh, career goals. And um, while you are trying to uh, find the best solution, don't forget that uh, um, you, know, you can get help from the teachers, program coordinators, and uh, student advisors. Uh, they will be by your side and help you to go through the planning process. So uh, what you are going to do is uh, just to take action. Okay, take action. So free your mind, think independently, choose wisely, and decide confidently. You know, explore the uh, and evaluate all possible subjects, not necessarily popular ones. Some popular subjects may not fit your, 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 your need and your interest. Okay? And align the intended major uh, with your true passion and uh, interest. And more importantly, consider the maximum benefits out of your major minor selection. So you should think about questions like this, you know, uh, what specialized knowledge and skills can be obtained? And whether a focused discipline or an interdisciplinary approach can match your long-term goals and support your uh, desired career path. Okay, so with careful uh, thinking uh, and uh, planning, I'm sure you will be able to uh, take the major that you want. Um, in addition to the above uh, general advice, I would add one concrete example. This is new. <laughs> one concrete example to show what specialized knowledge and skills you may expect to learn from the intended major studies. So now everyone talks about uh, the impacts of AI on uh, higher education, right? Indeed, different types of AI uh, tools, for example, ChatGPT, um, you know, can be used to um, uh, answer the exam questions or create a, uh, a, um, an essay, you know, almost instantly, right? 
So these uh, tools are, are, are very powerful, right? But at least at current stage, as far as I can tell, you know, I can use one uh, real test to prove that uh, uh, chat GPT, you know, does not yet reach an advanced level of specialty that a well-trained humanities student may have. Okay, so on the left side, maybe sorry for the small uh, you know, the letters, but uh, you can see that on the left side, I type in a question on a well-known British missionary, Robert Morrison, in late in Bill, China. I think many of you know him already from history courses, history books, right? Very well-known uh, missionary. Um, to this uh, general question, you know, I ask uh, his contribution to Christianity in uh, late Qing China. And then you can see that uh, basically GPT can give a, a well-structured essay with clear and accurate and concise uh, answers, you know, kind of uh, like an A-level <laughs> essay. Um, but I would say that, uh, you know, it's a good uh, summary uh, you know, uh, in this essay, right? But it's uh, still not enough. I think you can, many people can just uh, do it, do the same thing, you know, uh, with uh, the, the help of uh, like a Google search, with help of uh, history books, right? But, uh, you know, the thing is, uh, you know, um, when I type in a more specific question that requires close reading, of the original source, GPT only gave vague and uh, incorrect answers. So here I give you the example. You can see. So trust me, I checked the answers. They are inaccurate. <laughs> okay. So, but still, you know, you know, kind of a well-structured essay. Um, okay. So uh, anyway, I think a, a history uh, student can certainly beat GPT in this respect. Now read the original text, do comparative analysis, and find a solid evidence to prove the argument. Okay, so this is exactly the kind of uh, uh, advanced knowledge and skills that you will be trained in your major studies. Okay, so, so you can apply this specialty of critical thinking and communication skills uh, to your academic work and to your uh, future career, okay? So um, taking courses uh, to fulfill the major minor uh, requirements is indeed very important, but this is not the only thing that an art student can do uh, during the four-year or five-year studies. We can provide a variety of uh, you know, learning opportunities for you to get engaged and uh, make uh, progress with, few, uh, with further uh, achievements, okay? They include uh, internships, um, you know, uh, exchange uh, studies uh, in overseas uh, institutions, and uh, um, field trips uh, to places all over the world uh, with the faculty-sponsored funds. Uh, which is very good, <laughs> and uh, professional uh, preparation activities and job fairs, etc. Okay. Uh, last but not least, uh, we offer additional support to DIC students uh, who are admitted to BA and uh, BAHDT, uh, including this um, uh, entrance uh, uh, scholarship and uh, arts elite uh, scheme. Uh, for several major programs. Um, we welcome those eligible students to apply and use uh, the support to facilitate more advanced learning experiences. Okay, so today we have uh, you know, many colleagues here uh, offering uh, you know, a series of sessions to promote uh, their programs and answer whatever questions you may have uh, regarding our curricula uh, major minor options, uh, you know, exchange studies and career prospects, etc. So uh, I would really encourage you, you know, to talk to them and uh, enjoy your day here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Christy. 
And good afternoon, everyone. I hope you have had a productive and fun day at Hong Kong U. But if I remember my experience correctly, it's also somewhat bewildering. It's um, perplexing. For the students in our room, I'm old I mean, allow me to jump in and out of Cantonese every now and then just to keep you on your toes. It's just quite uh, an exercise, isn't it? May I go to May I go to Law? Uh, and it's history, the same thing that I studied in high school, secondary school, as I would in Hong Kong U. I find it a little bit um, unfair sometimes to ask an 18-year-old to declare a major when we actually have a system of knowledge that is a little bit confusing after 12 years of education in primary school and secondary school. And for the parents in the room, um, I was in your situation not too long ago. I had to shepherd my two sons through high education, uh, post-secondary school, just a few short years ago. I guess the, uh, the usual question I, I get from uh, the adults, the grown-ups, the parents, the teachers, would be, what do you do with this major? It's fair. And it's also quite reasonable then that many of the grown-ups in the room would channel our energy towards a degree in medicine or law because with an MBBS, you become a doctor. With an uh, LOB, you become a lawyer. What is it that you do with a degree in arts, a BA from Hong Kong U? Well, let me submit for your consideration something that I think we should all bear in mind in our world today. I would think many of the 18-year-olds in the room will not work in a single job for your life. And many of you will not have a single career in your life. Quite likely, you have to switch from job to job because of opportunities or challenges. And sometimes you would even consider a new career. Of course, with a degree from a medical school, you might be a doctor for the rest of your life, and I hope that's um, our students' true callings. But then for those who are thinking about the fluidity of our world and the opportunities, challenges that our world presents, well, we have this exciting major called Global and Area Studies offered by the Faculty of Arts here at the University of Hong Kong. And precisely, as you can see in the tagline in English now, and we'll, see, we'll show it in the many languages we teach, it is our effort to help equip our students, our graduates, with the tools, at least a toolbox, a beginning toolbox, to explore and handle a complex world. Now, what exactly does it mean to study global, the world, in Hong Kong, in Hong Kong U, in the Faculty of Arts? Well, there are many programs that will help you understand the world. But let's situate that from our very condition here in Hong Kong. We just had another policy address a few days ago. We've heard again, right? You have uh, the support of the motherland. We have the support of the motherland. And we are supposed to be the conduit for China with the world. What exactly does it mean? to be situated in Hong Kong, to be connected with um, our motherland, and to connect China with the world that we live in. For those of us in the room, I think it's not too, too far a stretch for me to imagine that most of us are bilingual, at least. Um, and most of us are Longman Samyu because that's just the way we've been trained in um, our school system here in Hong Kong. What we are proposing is a language-rich program that will allow you multiple perspectives to understand the world. And let me start by sharing with you this video that we prepared.
I hope you find this as exciting as we do. It is a program that we have invented, not in a vacuum. Uh, it's grown out of our many language programs and our area study specialties. We have dedicated teachers for the various language courses, along with our area uh, dimension of the, the courses as well. It is our effort to integrate all these programs so that we can, pre we can present to our students a sense of coherent toolbox uh, for the study of the world while retaining the flexibility for our students to choose from various languages that we offer. As you can see from the list, we, we offer uh, one of the more comprehensive um, array of languages here in the city or even in Asia. Along with many different disciplines, history, political science, um, linguistics, culture studies, film studies, to help us understand the world. It is our hope that the courses we offer, the exchange that we have, both in the classroom and also field trips, internship, we create the right toolbox so that our students can appreciate the past, how it conditions the world that we live in, culturally, politically, and in all dimensions. Have another set of tools to understand and appreciate, analyze the world that we live in in the present, and, the most important, and most importantly, to chart a way forward for the future, the future of our world, the future of your world. Now, just to back up to the question I started with, especially for the parents, um, what exactly do you do with this degree? Well, this is a new degree, but we have many graduates from our other programs, the predecessor programs, um, that, uh, we, that we have uh, fused together for this new exciting opportunity. And these are some of the jobs, first jobs, uh, that they have taken on. You see a representation of companies in business, finance, creative industries, education, language, all types of jobs. Still a little bit abstract, isn't it? Let me just offer two vignettes of exchange I've had with students to give you more of a specific, concrete picture. I started teaching here about a dozen years ago, and one of my earlier students was in American studies. And when I spoke with him, he said, oh, well, I'm doing this because I want to be in investment. I said, oh, OK, interesting. Uh, I, I was in finance before I became a historian. So why are you doing American studies? His answer, how am I supposed to work on Wall Street or with people from Wall Street if I do not understand the culture, the background, the way they think? I will only have the techniques that I've learned in finance without a true appreciation of their background and how am I supposed to click with them in the absence of that? Needless to say, this insight has made him quite a successful, successful uh, banker in the last decade or so. Another example that I can give you, I like my wines. And one time, I, was, I found myself, um, not um, surprisingly, in one of the French business districts in Wan Chai. There's a dead-end street in Wan Chai that sells a lot of French goods. I'm not sure if you know about it. And I happened to be carrying a folder from my unit, School of Modern Languages and Cultures. And this person came up to me and asked me, so do you work there? I was a little bit perplexed. Uh, why am I getting asked this question? I just want a glass of wine. It turned out that this is a graduate from our Spanish program. And I was like, oh, I'm proud of you. Um, what are you doing now? Well, I'm here. I'm working in this French business. I find that quite surprising. I, said, well, I thought you studied Spanish. Why are you in a French business? He said, well, John, this is actually quite interesting um, that you should ask that question. To study Spanish actually allows me not just to appreciate the language itself, but also to see how this embedded in a larger entity in Europe, and more importantly, how this whole industry of wine is situated not just in one nation, one country, but in a whole web that's connected, connected in Europe and all the way to Hong Kong. So I hope that we can draw some inspiration from these two very successful graduates we have, and hearing what they have to say to us, I feel that my colleagues and I have done at least a decent job um, creating the, the right environment for our students who come in here more with, um, you know, with eyes wide open with a, with a world that is very perplexing uh, with the tools for them to appreciate the complexity and to capitalize on the opportunities that the world presents. One last thing. 
you saw in the video that we have this award called the Young Global Leader Award. This is in addition to what our colleagues, my colleagues have presented to you in terms of the elite scheme for Faculty of Arts and also the other awards scholarships offered by the University of Hong Kong. We offer this in particular for an inaugural class for um, global and area studies in the Faculty of Arts because we want to recognize the top performers who are going to be global leaders from this first class. What we're asking for is not just academic results, of course, good academic results is always a nice prerequisite, but also some reflection of what they want to be, what type of global citizens they desire to be, how they want to be leaders in the world that they will grow into. The deadline for the main round is December 15th, and we would uh, like to see how our students can take advantage of this and be thoughtful about the curriculum we have to offer. And most importantly, we hope that this is going to help facilitate uh, the fostering of a community of uh, interested students um, who will then work with us throughout the college years, university years, as they proceed along with this major. Where can you find the information? Feel free to scan this code. You'll find information about the program, our curriculum, the scholarship, and our locations, how, how to find us uh, electronically or otherwise. I hope you find this as exciting as we do, and we look forward to hearing from you about this opportunity. Thank you very much.